what's up hey guys I have a short video of my October wrap-up I'm quite disappointed in myself because I only ended up reading six books um, in October because of Netflix I think if you've already watched my previous video you will know that and that's because I kept watching Downton Abbey when I probably should have been reading but I don't care that show is phenomenal um, a little bit of a disclaimer, I'm going to rant about two of the books that I read in October and I just wanted to let you guys know, just so you're warned. And yeah, let's just get right into the wrap up. The first book that I'm going to talk about because it ended up being my absolute favorite book that I read in the month of October is The Dark Days Club by Alison Goodman. <sighs> is everything that I wanted it to be and more. Um, I ended up giving this book a five out of five stars on Goodreads and I just it was so so satisfying like the best way that I could like compare this is just like you know when you have like your most favorite dessert or your like most favorite food and you bite into it and you're just like it's like so satisfying that's how I felt the entire time I was reading this and I've already purchased the second uh, book to this trilogy which is called The Dark Days Pact. Probably not going to read that until December because I don't want there to be too much time in between when the third book comes out which is in January. Um, but this is just it's super awesome. I ended up putting it on my holy grail shelf on Goodreads which is pretty much reserved for only my most favorite like all-time favorite books so that's how much I love this book and I also did a review for it so I will link that down below and I hope that you guys end up picking this up because I think if you love YA romance paranormal themed um Regency era kind of setting then you will love this the next book that I read is um, from the Twilight Saga and that is the graphic novel adaptation by Young Kim which is um, originally written by Stephanie Meyer. Um, I ended up reading the second book to the graphic novel series and that's New Moon. I already returned it to my library because I don't want late fees but I really really enjoyed the second book. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to continue on with this series if I can find it at my library. I didn't see the third book at my library so that's a little concerning but I might just request it. I think that if you're somebody that wants to uh, give Twilight a second chance then definitely check out this series because pretty much 80% of the junk is cut out from the original series and the female protagonist is like 80% less annoying. And yeah, the next book that I ended up reading I'm like so disappointed that I ended up spending $25 on this and that is Love Her Wild by Atticus. I don't know why Okay, first off, I'm just gonna say, I didn't have high expectations for this, but I was like still pretty disappointed that I ended up spending $25 on this. These were not original at all. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure I've seen like so many different variations of these poems on Pinterest and on Tumblr, and I just don't think that it's worth the money. I'm sorry, Atticus, but it's not. Um, this was super cringy. As well like some of these were just so so bad like you know when you just feel like you're about to be sick and like you can feel it in your throat like that's how I felt <laughs> pretty much the whole time that I was reading this um I will say though that like I ended up giving this I think about 2.5 ish stars on Goodreads out of 5 because I did appreciate the corresponding images um, throughout Okay, okay, so like, if this doesn't make you cringe, like, I honestly, I don't even know. He says, chase your stars, fool. Life is short. Like, how profound is that? I'm sorry if you liked this, but I just, it wasn't for me, and it pretty much just reconfirmed that I prefer old English poetry over modern poetry. The next book um, that I ended up reading in the month of October I've already talked about a little bit and that is The Witch by Ronald Hutton. Um, it's an academic book um, written kind of like a thesis like format and it was extremely dense and dry 
I still enjoyed it. Um, if you're somebody that wants to learn more about the origins of witches, then I highly recommend that you give this a go. I feel like I would have been a little bit more engrossed with it had I been reading it in kind of a classroom setting and learning about um, more about the content that was being presented, but I still recommend it. The next book I want to talk about is Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. Zappia? I don't know. It is a YA contemporary romance that touches on those dealing with mental health issues, but a friend on Goodreads recommended it to me and I saw that there was a whole ton of hype surrounding it, so I ended up purchasing it on my Kobo and I devoured it in like one sitting and it was pretty darn good. I ended up giving it 3.5 stars on Goodreads out of 5. Um, I did have a few issues with it and I kind of elaborate more on that in my review on Goodreads, so if you want to check that out, I'll link it down below. Um, I just didn't like some of the messages that were implied. I felt whether they were done on purpose or not, I just felt like that it kind of put a um, negative stigma on those dealing with mental health. And if you want to know why I think that, then you should definitely go check out my review. But you are essentially following a female main character that is dealing with um, everyday struggles of high school, except she's an introvert, she has anxiety, um, she's dealing with a bit of depression, but she also uh, writes web comics. that's kind of like her outlet, and she does these online and she does them anonymously. And she ends up, ends up meeting a, a boy at school who just transferred and he ends up writing fan fiction for her webcomics. And then, yeah, then there's kind of like a little plot twist. I didn't really think that it was a huge plot twist by any means. But I still highly recommend this contemporary. If you end up picking it up though, do not get the ebook version because there's a whole bunch of artwork throughout the book and I just don't think that the ebook did it really like any justice. So I don't think it's too much more to pick up the physical copy and I think you'll get more of your like money's worth that way and you'll appreciate the artwork a lot more. So the next book that I'm going to talk about, there's a whole ton of controversy surrounding the series, and that is The Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simon Simmons, something like that. I'm not going to let anybody make me feel bad for enjoying this book, and I don't care. I ended up giving it 5 out of 5 stars. Um, this book series falls under the categories of... Um, adult fiction, um, historical fiction, it's romance themed, it touches on um, World War II and the Holocaust and I really enjoyed it. Um, there's quite a bit of controversy surrounding it because somebody had posted a bunch of snippets of um, the text from the book on Twitter and pretty much said that this book suggested um, or condoned uh, sexual assault and physical abuse, emotional abuse. I didn't get that from this book at all. I don't know why that other person, um, that's the message that they took from the book for whatever reason. It's unfortunate that that's what they took away from it, but that's not what I took away from it whatsoever. And maybe because I related to it on a different level. Um, I was fortunate enough to meet a Holocaust survivor when I was in junior high and also, my great-grandparents, I'm part Ukrainian, if y'all don't know, they immigrated here um, from Ukraine and to start a life in Manitoba and I just, I related to it on a different, different level. I personally thought that that's posting a bunch of snippets of the book on Twitter um, for people to take it out of context and make it seem like it's something that it's not, especially for those who haven't actually read the book. I think if you want to judge a book, then you should fully read the book and see for yourself what you take away from it. I enjoyed it and I'm probably going to continue on with it. If you want to read my review, um, it's not a huge in-depth review of the first book because a, it was like 800 pages and there's just no way of summing that all up, but I kind of wrote more about um, my thoughts while I was reading it and kind of reflecting on it. So I will link that down below if you want to check it out, which kind of brings me on to my, um, 
to the next point I want to make and it's a little bit of a rant but I just want people to know that if I write a negative ish review or another book where writes a negative review or somebody else that you know on Goodreads writes a negative review don't let that discourage you from picking up a book that you really want to read I mean if I had seen this girl's Twitter and saw all those snippets like if I had listened to that I would have missed out on a book that I really enjoyed and if I listened to everybody who said on Goodreads like don't read this book I would have missed out on a ton of good books and for the most part I think that I have a pretty awesome group of friends on Goodreads they always make the disclaimer that you know just because they didn't like it doesn't mean that you shouldn't give it a go I don't think people on booktube really talk about that too much I mean every now and then they kind of say like it's just my personal opinion but that's just it sometimes bigger youtubers can kind of have this audience where you feel kind of discouraged like if I end up liking it like are they gonna look at me like kind of differently if I like a book that they don't like that they thought was just a condoned sexual abuse or something like don't let it discourage you everyone interprets something differently and when we read a book it's our thoughts on it they're subjective same with our reviews so I just wanted to touch on that a little bit because I don't think that people touch on it enough and don't ever let anybody make you feel bad for enjoying a book that they didn't like I'm still going to write negative reviews I'm still going to tell people I you know I wouldn't really recommend that but at the end of the day you read what you want to read like it's your hobby and you read what you want to read and what you enjoy and don't let anybody make you feel bad about it anyways that's kind of my rant I will link all of the reviews that I've done for all of the books that I've um, read in the month of October I think the only one that I didn't review was Twilight but I did review the first one so I'll link that down below yeah don't hesitate to add me on Goodreads I mean if you like this video that's awesome if you want to give it a thumbs up if you're new and you want to subscribe that's even cooler happy Thanksgiving to all of my American friends and I will see you guys in my next video